You're listening to A Pleasure Podcast, a podcast network revolutionizing the conversation around sex and relationships. For more, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Like if I've done something for you, or if I've sort of shown you something that I've done, and the reaction is like, oh, well, it could have been better, or like, oh, well, this thing's wrong with it, or yeah. or just like, oh, okay, can you do this other thing? You know, like that, without that, like, oh, that's great, or thank you, I really appreciate it, without that, I think maybe that's extra hurtful for someone where words of affirmation is kind of high on their I'm love I'm trying language. to get better. <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi Amory podcast. On this episode of the Multi Amory podcast, we're talking about the five love languages. We reference these a lot on the show, but it's been quite some time since we actually discussed them in depth. So we figured we would give you all and ourselves a refresher course. What are the five love languages and how do they show up in your day-to-day -day interactions with your partners? What if you and your partner's love languages just don't mesh? And are there ways of showing your partner you care, even if you're not great at a particular love language? We talk about all this and more today. Emily, take it away. So love languages <laughs> is this concept, this thing by this doctor. His name's <laughs> Gary Chapman. Dr. Gary Chapman to you. No, God, God uh, Dr. And, Gary yes, Chapman. Emily, you need to get it correct. In the past, we've referred to him as God Dr. Gary Chapman because he oh, is... Oh, you're right. God Doctor. A Christian How did that man. happen? He's a very Christian man. Well, because his, his PhD is in... Like theology, or oh, something. theology. Yes, yeah. He's a doctor or of religious theology. studies, or some some other. He's a God doctor. Okay, yeah. so God doctor Gary Chapman, <laughs> theologian master, theology master. Yeah, um, he first explored this concept, the five long love languages, in his book, The Five Love Languages: The Secret to Love That Lasts. So this was written in ninety two, and it did just celebrate its twenty five year anniversary. I guess. In 2017 which is cool uh, <laughs> so yeah he's taken this one concept and he's like expanded it into things for and books i guess for single people for teenagers for parents with children for people with spouses in the military and then like the five love languages for men and the five love languages for women so he kind of yeah he's really just made it this, all this one idea and just really and run with, with it. it yeah he really did so <laughs> i guess he just he was like Going at his practice for a long time with people, he had like a practice, I guess, for I don't know if he was a counselor. I he guess definitely he was, a counselor. was not. Uh, he's got no? a, this is what the Wikipedia says he has a master of religious education and a doctor of philosophy. Well, um, he may have been a counselor for like could have been a Christian God counselor, for God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there you go, a God counselor. He's a counselor for gods. <laughs> <laughs> He's the counselor to the gods. Wow, yeah, what a title. Yeah. <laughs> that's but, what God doctor means. It's doctor to the uh, gods. There you go. Oh, like that's that. really intense. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, like, I realized that what makes one person feel loved isn't necessarily the same for everyone. So he developed the five love languages to help couples understand the ways in which each expresses and wishes to receive love. Okay, I so, just want listeners to know, yeah. this intro makes us sound like we are totally taking the piss out of God, Dr. Gary Chapman. Um, <laughs> no, which I mean, we are cool, a man. little bit. Only a tiny bit, only a tiny bit. Clearly, he's turned this into an empire for himself, you uh -huh. know, just kind of like really beaten this horse, as it were, of churning out all these books. And I don't want anyone to think that the five love languages are the be-all and end-all. We're not holding this up as a monolith of like, this is how everyone functions and how everyone works. And like, this is what you got to figure out. And it's the key to how you're going to have a successful relationship. I think he's probably tried to market that. We don't buy that necessarily. <laughs> but we do think it is a really, really helpful tool and a really good starting place for figuring out the best ways to communicate love and affection between you and your partner or partners. 
Yeah, totally. So, I mean, if you think about it, right, God Doctor is going along doctoring gods and stuff, and he comes up with this love languages thing, and at some point, you know, figures out, oh, there's these five, and that seems to work, and then he writes this book, and it blows up, and then and he... it sells a ton of copies on Amazon. Right, and it's, I think... It's interesting that he is kind of this one trick pony where it's like he hasn't come out with anything else really. It's just like well, he's done well, the, the apology languages. Oh, right. Also. You're right. Yeah. That. But well, the, the one, oh, the he one also trick did language the apology pony. language? Yeah, the apology languages. His one, his oh. one, he's, he's a language pony. He's a language pony. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. what I'm trying to get at though is I think the reason why he's been able to make a, a whole career out of this one idea really uh, is that it is a good one, that it does work for a lot of people. And I think it it strikes a nice balance of being useful and practical in a lot of different situations, but also being simple enough that it's not this, you know, intense, you know, thing that you have to go to like week long intensives to learn how to do, you know, like some other techniques out there that people teach. It's like this huge intensive. This is like, no, it's actually a relatively simple concept uh, to grasp. And I think that's actually what makes it useful. Yeah, what kind of put it in my mind again was I was hanging out with a good friend of all three of us, and they said that they are they used to be with a person who didn't have the same love language as they did, and that was really difficult. And now they're with someone who does have the same love language, and it's like they just jive and mesh really well together, and it's very easy. Hmm. And I was like, huh, I don't know. That's That's a really interesting concept that just like right out of the gate, you know you know, how you want love to be expressed. And then all of a sudden your partner just does it. And that's Mm. impressive to me. And I don't know, maybe things would be super easy in that way. But, (laughs) but I think it's not a bad thing to have different love languages. And it's kind of fun to be able to like, learn how to be good at each of them. Yeah, like becoming a love polyglot. I love that. Go. Yeah, I love that. I love polyglot. Well, there you go. Okay, yeah. I'm uh, I'm back. What's in. a polyglot? Uh, I mean, someone who speaks multiple languages. Like I think it's oh. like I think it's like more than three or more than five. I forget which. It's either oh, three I or didn't, five. I didn't know that, that you're there was a technically to be to be to count as a polyglot. Yeah, because you're not just bilingual or trilingual. Then exactly. maybe after three, it's polyglot. Possibly. What's what's <laughs> that? It sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> it does. <laughs> It does sound like a Pokemon. What does the internet say? Uh, it just says knowing or using several languages. I think some people like to do polyglot gatekeeping. I was literally just going to say that. But it just literally, it just, it comes from the two root words, poly, people meaning many. People are literally and, asking how many languages do you have to learn? Right. What does it say? It does not say anything useful. All right. Well, <laughs> it's just people go. on the internet giving their opinions about things. Okay, it's, great. How, so that means nothing. You, yeah. How useful has that ever been? Okay. To anyone? So sound, Never, and, sound and fury signifying nothing. Let's get back to talking about love languages. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yep. you, Macbeth. Okay. That I did know. All right. So let's do a crash course overview of the five love languages. So the first Sweet. one is. Words of affirmation, that's hearing Mm. things like praise, positive words, affirmation of the relationship, admiration for your partner or for yourself, you know, if you're hearing that from your partner, genuine pride for something that your partner has accomplished, Um, encouragement, compliments, list goes on and on and on. So So that's saying things, saying, saying good things, saying saying things, things. saying some nice things, acts of, well, let's say genuine nice things. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna sure, clarify sure, it there. Yeah. Okay. No, I like that, yeah. Yeah. The next one is acts of service. Um, and that's described as lightening your partner's burdens through thoughtful actions. Did you write this, M, or is this official copy? Hmm. No, it's not official copy. I think it was a mishmash of a couple different things. Okay. Uh so yeah. this includes things like taking initiative, doing chores around the house, paying bills on time helping your partner when they're in need, um, uh, handling to-do list items and doing things when they say that they're going to do them, or you know, going mm. out of your way to take something off of your partner's plate when they're particularly stressed out, or mm-hmm. doing something Lightening for their you- burden. Yes, lightening their burden, exactly. <laughs> lightening their load. Light- yeah. Uh-huh. Um, all right, the next one is receiving gifts. So I feel like this one's pretty straightforward here, but it's Part of it, in addition to just receiving a gift, it tends to be related to the gift being thoughtful. 
more than the gift being valuable, like in a monetary mm-hmm. sense or, or even useful. It's more like, even if it's a little thing, it's showing that your partner was thinking about you when they're not with you and spent the time to get this thing. So particularly things like handmade items, uh, you know, f- handwritten notes, things like that can count. I guess notes are interesting because they're sort of words of affirmation. They're archaic. Yeah, but, but just like the <laughs> archaic. Jeez. Chase is no, gonna make I mean, <laughs> this point about it being kind of like this this kind of bang more bang for your buck, two birds, one stone, and Emily just like they're no. archaic. <laughs> No, all I'm saying is that I'm saying that from a standpoint of like, how often do you get a handwritten letter nowadays as opposed to an email? That's what I mean by archaic. I just mean that, yeah, it's it's this old kind of thing that people don't really do that much anymore. And it's it's meaningful because of that. Like my friend Jacqueline, every single year for my birthday, she draws like a little Nintendo character mm. or the this year she drew my cat Henry Aww. eating, you know, a fish. It was really <laughs> cute. And it's very like thoughtful and then she has the most gorgeous handwriting I've ever seen mm. and so like you right. I always appreciate that a lot and it, it's you know that thoughtfulness that goes into making it is really cool. Nice. Yeah, totally. So so gifts particularly if they're thoughtful um, and also mention here that that these people tend to put extra care into things like holidays or birthday presents or anything centered around gift giving are like particularly important generally. Uh, it also said yeah. events when I was looking it up that it wasn't that it was like a- event planning because mm. you know things like birthdays and things like holidays that maybe surround are surrounded by gifts mm, okay. that those tend to be important as well which which I found interesting I didn't realized that before yeah yeah oh, this is sorry this is connecting so many dots one. about my partner alex <laughs> oh, really? oh yeah i know yes. because he and i are the same we're yeah, both gift i think gift so givers. yeah definitely. I, I don't think gifts is like the top of his list but it's it's at least number two um but okay. that makes sense with two. also the events thing as well okay mm. i'm figuring things yeah. out in yeah. real time here <laughs> this is perfect you uh-huh. get to see it happen yeah uh the, perfect. F- the fourth one is quality time So specifically, you know, we talk about this one a lot on the show, the difference between just spending time together versus spending quality time together. And that means that it's uninterrupted, intentional time together. Um, It could be through activities or going on trips together or just like time with each other where you're not on your phones or doing other things, giving each other your undivided attention Um, and kind of related to this is that people who value quality time, um, things like canceling on plans or postponing things will be especially meaningful in a negative way. You know, like those can be especially yeah. hurtful. And we'll talk about those negatives too yeah. later on, but yeah. Yeah. That's something to be aware of. So physical touch is the last one. Um, and that people who have this as their love language, they tend to really love things like warm embraces, gentle touches from their partner, uh, cuddling, holding hands, public displays of affection they're really big on, uh, like things like back rubs. And these touches, they don't necessarily need to be sexual in nature, although they can be, but kind of like reassurance of love through physical actions and touch. Yeah, yeah and I think that, What's interesting about this one, so we all, we'll, we'll get to this a little bit later, but we all took the, the quiz online to see what our love languages were and if they've changed since last time we did it. And the ones about physical touch were interesting because they tended to focus a lot on, maybe I would say maybe half the questions about physical touch involved it being in public. Yes. Involved holding hands in public or hugging in public or some sort of PDA. And it was interesting taking that test while we're in Japan Gosh, Where, oh yeah, because you're not allowed to. Well, <laughs> well you're, not, you're not allowed. allowed. It sounds extreme, but but just culturally, like people don't do PDA. Like it's rare to even see people holding hands. They do it, but it's rare. It's not like in the states where everyone's all over each other all the time. Uh, and so it was interesting taking that test, being like, "Huh, uh, I don't like I." When I was here, just like imagining walking down the street, like holding hands with Dedeker, there's a little bit of a like, "Ooh, I don't know." That's <laughs> Maybe it'd be better if, if we did something else. <laughs> so, so there is a cultural factor to it that I think is yes. worth taking into account if you're from a culture that's not the same as Dr. God, Gary Chapman. <laughs> Dr. God. Dr. God. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, so speaking of that test, uh, that's probably the best and easiest and fastest way to figure out what your love language is. I will say what I do appreciate about God, Dr. Gary Chapman 
is that while he has been quite prolific in putting out a lot of this material, at least with the core of it, he's not kind of trying to hide behind a paywall or anything. That's true. Yeah. You know, yeah. like he puts the quiz out there that anyone can take a lot. Yeah. Like there's a lot of information about all the different love languages out there that's available for free, even like official information. You don't have to buy the book. You don't have to take the course. You don't have to pay for the extended 30 page profile or anything like that. Um, so I do appreciate that. So if you go to five, that's the number five lovelanguages.com slash profile, then you can get to the quiz. If you just Google five love languages, it'll definitely be the first thing that You'll comes up. You'll get to the quiz. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, you have to fill out a little bit. I think you have to give them your email address. Mm -hmm. They will force you to pick. Are you in a relationship? Are you single or are you a child? And <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's, is this for, you know, you yes. with a child like about your children I, which i found okay. interesting yeah yeah because he does things for parents parents and children showing their love language to their kids that makes sense um yeah so i think we all took the like the quote unquote oh there's a teens one also right. um yeah we all took the quote unquote weird. couples quiz because i guess it's the one that's designed for like if you're currently in a relationship um mm -hmm. but you're not you don't have to do it with a particular partner you can do it by yourself if you do the singles ones too that's probably okay i'm sure the wording of the questions is probably just a little bit different i think it mostly just changes the wording of the question from what i remember from looking at both before is that the singles one either tends to put things more in a hypothetical like i would like it if if i like, had a partner if you weren't who did miserably this. single <laughs> and had finally no. found a partner that god <laughs> no now it's not mean. now you're being a jerk no okay. it's it's not it's like not that a god he's not that kind of god doctor no, he's, I mean, he's, he's not, not, Are you sure he's not a jerk for Jesus? I mean, he could be. But I will Is say, that a though. Thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from, from the site, though, uh, generally speaking, like it, it, okay, it does adhere to a gender binary generally. Mm -hmm. It tends to say he slash she. However, Sla yeah, slash I prefer not to say well, when it, like, yes, gave you the there's, opening. there's not an other option. It's just prefer not to say. But, regardless of which you choose, it doesn't like automatically make all of the questions be heteronormative. That's true. It is at least, you know, so okay. whatever. All right, all Just right. a tiny bit of credit I'll throw. Okay. God, Dr. Gary Chapman's right. way. What I was trying to say though is the singles one also focuses on like the way that your friends and family show affection for oh, you versus the relationship one. I think if, if I remember correctly, the relationship, like if you say you're in a relationship, it it's focused just on a partner. Well, I want to take that one now because I, I'm interested sure. in that more yeah. holistic look at what your love language is outside of just your romantic partners because that, that could be some really interesting information. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, uh, so one little caveat which I found interesting in my research is that you, there are different facets of a particular love language, which makes sense. But something like touch, for example, I read a little thing on his website where two people were talking about, well, my, you know, I love touch to convey security and reassurance and comfort. But my husband wants touch to convey sexual intimacy and attraction and interest. And so those touches feel different ways and are mm. different to each other. So yeah, it's just like these little nuances, which are kind of fascinating that I think people need to be aware of just because once you know that it can do things like bring you closer. Yes, well, doctor. I take some issue with that example because I would argue they're actually probably seeking the same thing. It's just that we've been socialized differently depending on our gender for hmm. sexual touch yeah. to mean different things to each of us. I just want to put in that disclaimer. No, I, I agree. I think, though, it's it's interesting because I'm trying to think about the way that you would express touch affection to each other would be different depending what you felt yes. the purpose of it was. I think it, it could was. be. Oh, like yeah, a little yeah. pat, like a reassuring pat or like a, you know, a, a gentle, I don't know, caress versus like, you know, a kiss on the neck or something mm -hmm. along those lines. Like those are two different things. Definitely. And I feel like I, I know I've experienced times where like in it's well, we'll get to this later. But in the past, my results have come up fairly high on physical touch when I've done these quizzes. Um, but I've definitely found times for me <laughs> Not where, anymore. where no, if someone if someone is touching me in like a more sensual sort of way when I'm not in that headspace 
it's that doesn't feel good. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, stop, stop it. So I think right. it is worth like keeping that in mind. And I was thinking maybe similar things with like words of affirmation. Does that for you mean like, oh, I, you know, I love you so much. Or is it more like, I'm really proud of this thing you did. I yeah, think that yeah, can totally. also, there's like nuance to all of them. Same with the quality time that again, there's mm, quite a range there that it could be. No, for me, quality time is we take a trip together and for your partner, maybe no quality time is like when we're able to be in the living room together, maybe not talking and like reading separate books, but still just together, mm, you yeah. know, even if we're yeah. not doing anything. Um, and sometimes exactly. that can be compatible and sometimes it can cause some friction, I think. So, so those are like layers upon layers of this whole thing. Yeah, for sure. So uh, just as a, a quick little thing, um, they have some statistics about how the average population breaks down when they take this quiz. And this is from God Doctor's website. So <laughs> yes. they distilled the information from the website and then like gave out these percentages, which was fun. Right. So what's interesting is that they're a lot closer to 20% each than I expected them to be. I thought there was going to be way more heavily weighted toward one mm -hmm. or the other. Um, so actually, I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why this thing has stuck around is the fact that people mm. do tend to come out somewhat evenly on this, which I think is interesting. There's like enough variety. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay. but, the, yeah. but the most common one at 23% is words of affirmation. Um, and then quality time and acts of service are both straight up 20%, one fifth of the time. And then physical touch is 19 and receiving gifts is 18. Uh, but they're all very close Still to each other. all really close. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so bear in mind that, you know, maybe you go, you take the quiz, you and a partner take the quiz, or maybe you and multiple partners take the quiz and mm -hmm. you kind of get this information. Unfortunately, it's not always quite as easy as just knowing the results of the quiz. It's a good place to start. It can definitely clarify a lot of things for you. Um, but there can be a disconnect, I think, in a variety of situations. Sometimes if you and your partner have very different love languages, there can be a disconnect there. Even if you have the same love languages, there can still be a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? like we were talking about. Yes. Um, I think I've seen people realizing also that sometimes the love language they receive from their partner that feels meaningful is different from how they tend to express love to somebody. So where sometimes they Absolutely. feel like my, my quote unquote giving love language is different from my quote unquote receiving love language. With, I think with a lot of people, it tends to be the same, like the same kind of act is meaningful, both giving and receiving. But for some people, it is slightly different. Um, and so the challenge lies in the fact that someone can potentially do something that will devastate their partner or unintentionally hurt their partner because they didn't have a firm grasp on their love language. And sometimes if your partner isn't aware of what your love language is, that sometimes it can feel like they did intentionally hurt you or they're keeping love from you in some way. So we do mm. want to dive in and talk about like, what are the common ways that a person could feel hurt or feel like their partner is withdrawing or withholding love uh, based on the different love languages? Hey, y'all, I want to take a quick moment to talk about AdamandEve.com. Um, to be totally honest, there's a soft spot in my heart for adamandeve.com because first of all, I don't know if you know this, but they've been around since before the internet. Like the company's been around since before there was even a dot com to attach to their name. It was just I'm Adam and sure, Eve then. Yeah, How yeah. Far I'm pretty it's sure come. if I think back, they were probably the first website I ever ordered a sex toy from. Oh, ever wow, wow, like yeah. they were around before amazon was around and before any other number of like competitors were around so they go way back um so if you go to adamandeve.com you can find all kinds of wonderful things whether it's sex toys or lingerie or pornography or lube or condoms pretty much anything you could possibly need for sexy times and the best part is that if you go to adamandeve.com and if you use our special promo code which is multi m-u-l-t-i then you can get 50 percent off pretty much any item in the store they will send you a free gift along with your order and they'll also give you free shipping and my favorite part this promo code can be used multiple times as well. So anytime you need to buy that sexy thing, the lingerie, the condoms, that sex toy that's really expensive, but you've been wanting for a long time, if you want to knock 50% off of that price, plus get a free gift, plus free shipping, use promo code multi at checkout. Yeah, so now we're just kind of going to go through each of them. 
and sort of talk about the inverse, like how a person might feel hurt if their love language is, for example, words of affirmation or acts of service or whatever. So if you are a person who loves words of affirmation, a way that you might feel hurt from your partner is if you do something like, or if you hear uh, that your partner is... If you don't upset hear, with you, if you that they're oh, I see. Yeah. well, yeah, no, that you hear like criticism, for example, from your partner, or if you don't hear that they appreciate you, uh, or if you hear something even like "I love you" but not in the way that you want, or not why, or you know hmm. something along those lines, or uh, if you don't hear that your partner is proud of you for something that you accomplished, for example, yeah, things I, like that. I feel like this one for this like, gets pretty nuanced. Yeah. For me, words of affirmation is very high. And so I'm kind of thinking about this one being like, yeah, it's kind of like that. If maybe if I've done something, like if I've done something for you, or if I've sort of shown you something that I've done and the reaction is like, Oh, well, it could have been better or like, oh, well, this thing's wrong with it or yeah, or just like, oh, OK, can you do this other thing? You know, like that without that, like, oh, that's great. Or thank you. I really appreciate it without that. I think maybe that's extra hurtful for someone where words of affirmation is kind of high on their I'm love trying language. to get better. <laughs> <laughs> we like, already yeah. we already covered this in the criticism episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on it. I'm aware. Oh, uh, you yeah. know. Awkward. Yeah. Um, so, okay. The next one would be acts of service. So an example of this, which kind of goes along with words of affirmation is if you don't hear appreciation for things that are done around the house, or if like you perform a task or a chore, uh, and you don't hear appreciation for that, or even if your partner doesn't like help out with a task or a chore or something like that, that can be really hurtful to your partner as well. Yeah. Okay. So this one's high for me too. I know this is high for uh, you too, right? It's top of the list. Yeah. yeah. So for yeah, me, acts of service is big for me too. So I found this one like in addition to maybe the, sort of the not helping with a task or chore or something like that. I, one that I found come up for me is if I feel like there's an easy thing that my partner could do, like I, I you know, I don't know what it is. Like if if um you know, they're doing, you know, if they're going and getting something and they grab, like they're going to get a green right, tea the whole, the, and they the grab one thing. for me or like grabbing uh. a napkin when we go to a restaurant or something and grabbing one for both of us instead of just totally. one, that not doing stuff like that, that seems like, at, at least to me, oh, <laughs> seems like, oh, oh, this I should obviously you. be done, mm -hmm. that that can be hurtful if that thing's not yeah. done. Yeah. No, yeah, I, hear you. I that feel makes like complete for sense. me the acts of service thing. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna talk about more of our personal stuff and baggage um, in the bonus. In the bonus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I know for me this one is kind of tricky for me because for me, um, I feel very loved if a partner like plans a date, essentially, and that feels mm. like I've never been able to tell. Does that is that more of an act of service or is that more of a quality time thing? I feel like a it, little it, both. I feel like it, it's more heavily weighted toward the act of service. I think it's kind of like yeah. the service of like thinking about it ahead of time, making some decisions ahead of time. Mm, yeah, you know, and then and I I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's how it comes up for me. So maybe that's actually like we're talking about the different nuances within the languages. That that's something where Dedeker and I might both have acts of service high up on our lists, yet. They show Yours up Yours is about napkins and mine is about dates. <laughs> right, right. That mine ah, might be more be about reductive. like little thoughtful things and hers is more about taking the time to do a, a slightly larger task, mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yeah. Right? Yeah, that so that's, that is a good point of a way we can I do know, of, yeah. didn't Jace like forget something one point and Dedeker, <laughs> or at some point and Dedeker was like, ah, like, I mean, a little all, annoyed I mean, about it. Mean, always, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, like she asked you for something re kind of recently, like in the last month, like to uh, to get at the store or whatever. And then you didn't. And no, then we, yeah, like, we talked about uh, this on an episode. I don't know how that yeah, yeah. falls in, but just like that's kind of my I think like some family trauma and baggage of like forgetting things like really gets yeah. to me. Like it really right. forgetting things is this huge betrayal, which is ridiculous. Like that's purely just me and my own stuff going on. It's not objectively that forgetting things is a huge betrayal. Um 
But I don't know. I don't know if that what that falls under. I guess it kind of depends on what it is that's being forgotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. yeah. No, I know, but I hear you. Like the the acts of service, maybe, and that is just if your partner like forgets an important date. I don't know. Maybe that could be a gift thing, but not necessarily. Like if you talk to them about something that you want to do together, or and then they mm. forget about it, or they schedule something else around it, and you're like, yeah. wait, what the hell? Like, yeah. were you not listening? Did you just forget? Like, what is this? So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That Did does you, happen sometimes. you forgot sometimes. to tell me that you love me? <laughs> then it's a combination of words of affirmation. It's, what's, yeah. Something that's just occurring to me right now is that I could actually see an argument that, like, the thing behind all of these is the idea that you're thinking about me and like mm. putting effort behind thinking about me. Totally. And then these are just different ways to show that. Whether it's like, I'm thinking about you, so I'm going to tell you that with words, like how what I appreciate. Or if it's, you know, like Dedeker was saying, like taking the time to plan a date or like for me, like taking the time to just do some like little everyday thing to be thoughtful, right? To show that you thought of me when you went to go get that napkin, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> or with same with like gifts or quality time or physical touch. It's like just maybe they're all just different ways of showing the fact that you're on someone else's mind. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, okay. maybe I just boiled it all down. I found the universal language, the Esperanto of the love languages. I'll allow it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, okay. Let's go on to the next one, shall we? Cool. Uh, yeah. okay, this uh, receiving gifts. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, clearly a lack of gifts. Or I think maybe more often we'd see this as like not enough thought put into gifts. Mm -hmm. Like maybe maybe someone who receiving gifts is an important love language for them that like a, a, like a random gift card might be like the mm -hmm. worst thing you could mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Unless maybe if it's a gift card to a specific place that shows you put thought into knowing like, oh, you like this place or you've been wanting to go here. But maybe the like, you know, Visa check card gift card that's like the most generic <laughs> of gift cards. That's the worst. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because then there's no, you know, there's very little thought that yes. went into it. Uh, I could see that. But also, yeah, the one of the things that they talked about is that if you give a gift and then your partner isn't enthusiastic about receiving that gift, so that mm. that can be kind of hurtful as well. I've experienced that for sure. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, actually, it's funny. So Did you look at me when you said that because it was me? No, no, okay. it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, for me, actually, growing up, this was uh, an issue with my stepdad. Oh. That oh, really? No matter what the huh. gift was, no matter if he liked it or not, his response is always, oh, thanks. It's great. Uh, with ah, like no you know with no like emotion no enthusiasm no emotion whatever and maybe you know a month later you'd see that he's like using the thing all the time and and really appreciates it or mm. or maybe that he doesn't you just don't know and his response is always oh great thanks that's hard and it was hard and it, it was one of those things though that once i figured out that that's just how that's just what's going to mm. happen i was able to kind of even when i had that reaction of like ah oh, shit he hates it to then go, actually, you know what? I don't know. And so I'm going to let that go because I've learned that about him. Wow. <laughs> but but that was yeah. a, a challenge. And I've definitely found that with other people, too. If, if I give a gift and they're sort of like, oh, cool, thanks. And not like, oh, I like this about it. Or uh, kind of being specific of like, oh, I appreciate this thoughtful part of it or something. I'm a little bit like, oh, God, I hate it. I'm not going to lie. My, I give my partner an Apple Watch for their birthday because... Like, I thought that he would use it and wanted it, and it's literally sitting on this, on his, like, bedside oh, table. Oh, no. Oh, Emily. Which is really sad, because I have one, and it's super old, and I've given one to my mom, like, the brand new one, uh -huh. and to my partner, the brand new one, and I have, like, the old shitty one, and oh, I'm like, Emily, uh, but give Emily, his... just do a little swap. Just a secret swap a lot. <laughs> he won't even notice. I know, but his is bigger and cooler than mine, and I'm just saying, he did wear it for a little while, and he's like, oh, I'll use it when I get back into, like, working out and stuff, but now he's not using it ever, and oh, it's very sad. I'm sorry. Yeah. He uses it thing. only when we go on high. I know, trust me. Yes, yeah, gifts are your thing for oh, sure. Man. Jeez. So I'm like, every time I see it, I'm like, Ugh. Sad. Oh, I can I can attest right. though to all our listeners. I've never received a bad gift from Emily. 
Oh ever. yeah, she's like she's the best pro, gift giver ever. Oh so yeah, for sure. I do, so like, sign up to be Emily's friend, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's funny, Dedeker, because Alex consoles me for mm-hmm. some of your gifts sometimes. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we like. I think we like consult each other. Like you know, I I think he has good opinions too, because that's also like his. Because that's yeah, that's what so. all y'all are into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I should. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're right. I should just come to Emily more often. Or you should Alex. open up a gift consulting business, Emily, oh. really. <laughs> That's your niche. Gosh. Yeah, you just have to you just have to listen to things that people say that they want. If people are like, "Oh, that isn't this cool? Like, look at this." And I'm like, "Perfect. Easy." Mm. I do take I do take notes on my phone throughout the year for Christmas specifically. Yes. Oh, really? Or a birthday. Yeah. I do I do I need, have, to, I need to do that. Every single year I have a note like a note in my Google Keep that is my running list of just like everything mm-hmm. that anyone's ever mentioned that is stuck oh, yeah. in my mind. Yeah. And then sometimes I get to the end of the year and I'm like, oh, that, I don't know about that. Or, oh, well, that would still be cool or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem I have is I'll, I'll hear people say things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to remember that. And then I immediately forget it. Well, <laughs> Jace. <laughs> Gotta talk about write some, down. some, yeah, yeah write some down. writing down. Yeah. Although I did read a David Sedaris essay once where he talked about how he used to do that, but then he would, he would literally do ridiculous things where he'd give him, like his boyfriend Hugh like a box fan in December, and he'd be what? like, "Why, why did you give <laughs> me a box see. fan?" He'd be like, "Well, in August when we were dying of the heat, you kept talking about how cool this particular box fan is, and <laughs> so, uh, so I got it for you." So, yeah. So I try to avoid wow. that situation too. That's hysterical. I love that. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, shall we move on to quality time? Yeah. Okay. So quality time. I think this one is clearly like if we're just spending a lot of time apart. That's going to be particularly hurtful to a person who yeah. has quality time um, yeah. or distraction. Like mm. we have time we're spending together, but we end up on our phones or we end up talking about work, <laughs> talking about who oh, that's, that's the one, the one that we comes have up to work us, on yeah. all the time. We end up talking about work or we end up just doing chores or we end up just planning our next day or, you know, planning what we have to do with the kids and not actually like devoting time to each other. Or uh, something that's come up with with several clients of mine is like our only quality time turns into processing time. You know, like our only quality time turns into times like either where it's like logistical processing, like you were saying of like figuring out the chores or what's happening with the kids tomorrow or what's happening at work or stuff like that. (coughs) Or it's like, okay, well, here's a finally our time where we can sit down and talk about the way that we pissed each other off last week and (laughs) and like no actual like positive quality time ends up in the schedule that's really which I, which point. honestly yeah. i think is important for everyone across the board regardless of whether or not quality time is your love language yeah yeah, yeah. well i mean just to plug it again that's why we recommend something like radar to yeah. have a regular check-in so you don't have to make every time you're together be about that you have a right. time for that yeah yeah um totally. but also like we were talking about earlier that things like someone canceling a date or like not not defending your time together can be really hurtful mm. if your love language yeah is quality time yeah, yeah. no that makes a lot and of so sense. and that can be not even things like straight up canceling a date or canceling quality time together but it could be things like consistently showing up late to your quality time or consistently needing oh, to leave yeah. early from your quality time um mm-hmm. you know when you have multiple partners i think yes. this is a really big one yeah, yeah. definitely definitely or feeling yeah. like your quality time together is always rushed or always just kind of squeezed in in little chunks or whatever, mm-hmm. that that can be really challenging for someone whose um, love language is quality time. Actually, yeah. something that um, a former partner of mine expressed to me was that she felt hurt if if her perception was that our quality time together only came around when my other partners were not available. Mm, yeah, mm. that's a big one, too, that I think comes up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. making it clear that, that like yeah. that the quality time is an important thing rather than just like, oh, I have this extra time rather than just the leftovers. So, yeah. oh, fine. I'll see you. Maybe. Yeah. Right. right. No, I know. Like, I think this is this is also high on my partner's list. Quality time. So like the fact that I go to Shanghai for two months, like that's really challenging for him because mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. And also. Yeah, just it, it, time. It, one once upon a time when we started dating, I had like three restaurant jobs. Right. Was always 
working all the time anyways but then also like on weekends when he would have days off so we kind of tried to adjust and like i tried to tailor my schedule a little bit more so that we had like at least one full day together where it's uninterrupted like i'm not doing multi-amory work and i'm not doing restaurant job or singing or whatever that was a rough time for everyone in your life i think (laughs) i know i didn't even it was really rough for me too i don't even know what i was thinking it was insane i just was very bad at saying no so <laughs> I said yes to all these jobs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think this, this one's interesting too. Cause I know like for, for in terms of like lining up your schedules with each other, that's something like mm-hmm. the Dedeker and I try to do during the times when we're living together, particularly it is sort of like saying, you know, maybe this time in the day is when we're going to stop working or trying to kind of line up when our days off are so that we have more time yet. Yeah. Yet we also, have found that we we don't want to just assume that then any spare time I have, and we've talked about this in many episodes, but just that any spare time I have means that's our quality time together. Mm -hmm. And instead it's Mm -hmm. like two things. It's one, it's making sure we plan some intentional quality time, like have a date night at least once a week. But on top of that, it's like, if we do have time where we're both not doing anything that we can have a conversation about it and go, we usually say, what kind of party do we want to have? But really what we mean is, what do we want to do? Cute. And the, the options are things like, do we want to just like separately do things near each other, <laughs> right? Or not even near each other, maybe on separate floors, right? Like I, uh-huh. I've, I've been really wanting to play some games by myself. I'd love some time for that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I'd really like to just read for a while. Or it's maybe like, do you want to do something together? Maybe we could go for a walk. Maybe we could go out to a store or go to eat or something, but just to kind of have that conversation about like, let's make an intention for what we want to do. So it's not yeah. one person going, Oh, I thought we were going to hang out together. I assumed we would hang out together. And the other person going, Oh, I assumed I got time to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Last one, physical touch. I don't. Yeah. If, if they don't touch you, you're going to be sad. <laughs> Um, I think this one could also maybe be like turning, like turning down sex or yeah. being physically distant. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Well, about again, that? I'm going to give the caveat on the turning down sex or turning down sex frequently that, um, I think that sex and when we come to our partners for sex, it is rarely about just the sex, you know, it's mm-hmm. rarely just about like, yeah. I want to have my genitals in proximity to yours it's rarely just about that you know um often it is about something specific it's about i want to feel close to you or i want to feel desired by you or i want or i want to get off while you're around or or you know they're like there's Uh there's all these different flavors of like why we seek sex from our partner um if you're someone who's allosexual and so I would just want to clarify that it's not just about turning down sex because I want people to feel free to turn down sex in their relationships, you know, not turn that into like, oh, that's, you know, a hurtful or coercive thing. Um, But it's about if, you know, you're seeking sex as a means of getting close or feeling loved or feeling attractive or feeling wanted, and that's constantly turned down, that then that Mm. might be a little bit of an issue. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think totally. Because like I think because there's being definitely, able to communicate about yes, it. Yes, because I think there's some people and um, where it's like if their partner turns down sex, it's like, oh, OK, whatever. You know, that's fine. Um, we can like I'm fine getting touch in other ways or getting comfort in other ways. Or, you know, I feel secure feeling like I know that you still want me and I'm still attractive and desired. And it's OK if we turn down sex. But for other people, it's like that's kind of a little bit more attached to sex. So I think it's more about it's more about the meaning behind the sex rather than just like the sexual act itself. Yeah. And I think on the other end, also, if you give if you are a touch person and someone whose love language is physical touch and then you give that to your partner and your partner doesn't necessarily react Mm. in the way that you want towards it, like if they are cold about it, that can be really hard for for a person with touch. It's like the receiving gifts thing. Like if they don't seem yeah. enthusiastic about your gift, I could it's see like, that with touch. What? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it seems like, again, like we said, that they reiterate when you're taking the quiz that there is something about also receiving or giving touch in front of other people. 
And I don't necessarily yeah. mean in like a kinky way, but just in kind of an everyday way of knowing, hey, my partner yeah. feels comfortable putting their arm around me when we're together or holding my hand when we're with their family. Um, or if we're around other partners, like my partner's still okay to like give me a little shoulder touch or a pat or hold my hand or a kiss mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, I've definitely worked with a lot of people where they're like, yeah, my partner is very affectionate and it's great. But then as soon as we're in front of another partner, they just completely go cold and there's like no touch mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, yeah. Or yeah. even worse, they only touch their other partner and right. then I get left out in the cold. Um, yeah, so yikes. again, can be very hurtful to anyone in that situation, but especially if your love language is physical touch, even more so. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I feel like communicating about levels of PDA that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. uh, is important for this one, too. Because it's also if you if you know that your partner just for whatever reason, culturally or just personality wise, isn't comfortable with PDA, that can go a long ways in helping improve this communication, both so you know what to expect from them, but also so you don't then try to do that and get that cold reaction, which can feel hurtful, right? right. Just by like actually having that conversation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, and I think that's actually something about the love languages in general that as we've mm. kind of been talking through them, you know, there's always this like, is this, is this an act of service or is this mm. a gift? You know, is this, physical touch or is this actually quality time? You know, like there's always those questions, but I think what's useful about this, what's like especially useful is just that it gets you to talk about it at all. Yes. And definitely. think about yeah. it at all, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by manscaped.com. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools and products for below the belt grooming. You can use promo code multi to get free shipping and 20% off at manscaped.com. I had already been using the lawnmower 2.0, which is their electric trimmer. But after we ran our first ad, or actually right before that, I started using what they call the plow safety razor. I, now that I've had time to use it more, I really enjoy it. I really like the fact that I'm not wasting a lot of those plastic razor cartridges all the time when I'm changing it out. Oh yeah. It's relatively easy. I have found in pretty much any country to find the razor blades that go into safety razors, whereas finding your specific brand of whatever cartridge razor can sometimes be more difficult uh, for traveling and also just, you know, making a less of an impact on the environment and the fact that I'm not irritating my skin quite as much by doing so many blades over it. I will say it takes a little more skill to shave. Like you're, you gotta be a little more mindful of it, but I actually kind of like that aspect of it. Shaving becomes a moment as opposed to just like, oh, I gotta do this. It's the morning, but like you can make it into sort of like a, a mindful time for you in the beginning of your day to take some time for yourself. It's I like lovely. That. Yeah, that is kind of what yeah. it's like. So in addition, we wanted to talk to you about the Perfect Package 2.0. So this includes all of the things that you need to get your perfect shave. So it includes the Lawnmower 2.0, the electric... The waterproof electric trimmer, which I love. Yes. Highly recommend using it. And then, of course, the plow, the safety razor. Also, the Crop Preserver, which is ball deodorant. And the Crop Reviver, which is ball toner. Just a little spritz is all that you need. And then... <laughs> You get some shaving mats, and then all of this comes in a complimentary, complimentary toiletry bag. So it's great. You get every single thing that you need for the perfect shave. And for a free gift toiletry bag, it's surprisingly nice. So again, if you want to take part in any of that, you can get 20% off and get free shipping by using our promo code MULTI at manscaped.com. Again, it's 20% off, free shipping on top of that at manscaped.com, and use code MULTI at checkout. So let's talk about Patreon. Patreon is an amazing community of people that we have kind of compiled over the years. Um, but honestly, you have just all come to us and it's been so wonderful to get to meet um, all of our patron members. So when you become a patron at the $5 level, you become uh, part of our private Discord chat server and our private Facebook group. But then if you go to the $7 level, you get access to weekly bonus episodes and ad-free versions of our episodes. And then you also get them a day earlier. So all of those things are super great. Um, bonus episodes, something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because I know we all get a little bit more into personal stories. 
uh, from each of us. I tend to cry a lot on them. So if you want to hear more of that, then <laughs> definitely true. tune in. Um, there's also things like extra questions for guests that we have on the show, and then just even more in-depth information on the topic that we talked about um, during the show. So we would love it if you joined us at patreon.com slash multiamory. We love our patrons so much. We've learned so many amazing things from them about things that they want to hear about on the show, uh, even just like giving us a community in a way that we never even thought was going to be possible when we started this show. But it's huge, and it's become such an amazing resource for us as well. So if you want to be a part of all that, and we would love you to join, again, go to patreon.com slash multiamory. And another thing that would actually help us a ton, if this show is something that you like, is to take a moment, maybe right now, and just go to iTunes or Stitcher and write us a review. Um, we have so many amazing reviews from our listeners, and it, I know it, it can sometimes seem like it doesn't matter, but it actually does. It makes a big difference, especially for podcasts that aren't owned by PRX or NPR or one of these huge companies. Like for us, like independent podcasts, those reviews are what make us show up in search results at all, basically. Not even just a hire, but show up at all is the fact that iTunes is able to see, hey, people are engaged with this. People like this enough to take a moment and write something about it. So it really does make a difference. And we really appreciate getting to hear what it is you get out of this show. Um, in particular, I've loved how our reviews were actually the first thing that kind of made us realize that there were people who were in a variety of relationships, who are in monogamous relationships, or who are relationship therapists who are using the things that we talk about on this show with their clients. Um, like Those things are amazing, and we wouldn't have known that if people hadn't left those reviews. So if you haven't done it yet, we would love it so much if you just took a moment, again, to go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and write us a review and let us know what it is you like about this show. Why do you listen to it? Why is this worth someone taking an hour of their time each week to listen to? Uh, and we would appreciate that so, so much. And I look forward to reading them and probably getting teared up while doing so. Yeah, that's true. So we already shared some examples as we were going through that. Do y'all have any other particular personal examples you want to share about a time when maybe you in accidentally hurt a partner because you didn't know what their love language is or where you got hurt because a partner, you know, didn't, communicate with you in the love language that was best for you i think i think i'm fairly big on acts of service as well and in those little day-to-day -day things like i know um when i was at uh gen con with my partner i tried to like have things so that both of us but also so that he would like be comfortable so things like ibuprofen things like hand sanitizer like i've done a lot of cons mm. and i'm really adept at like doing you know, knowing what one might need for that. And so I would bring a bunch of stuff in that way. Um, but then also, yeah, things, so things around the house sometimes, if I don't get praise for that, then I might feel like, okay, come on. Mm -hmm. but I just did all of this stuff and, you know, tried to make like your life and the house nicer and stuff easier. And if I'm not hearing something about it, then I felt like challenged in the past and we've had good conversations about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I've learned, we'll talk about this maybe a little bit later, but but I do feel like being with multiple partners, you know, with people who have different love languages and the way mm -hmm. they express it, I think helps to cultivate that in me a little bit. Because like we've talked mm -hmm. about, you know, already my partner Alex, like really big on giving gifts. And I'm pretty low on the receiving gift spectrum. But since I've been with him it's I think it's changed that for me so that now it's like when I do receive a gift from him, it feels much more meaningful. Um, because you oh, know that's, that's where it comes from. Because I, like I know that. that's where it comes yeah. from. Mm. Um, and so I don't know, is that just like weirdly situational in the way that it's changed <laughs> or whatever? Um, I don't know. Well, at least like, I mean, I think that's the point of knowing all these is that once you receive that kind of love from someone you know, hey, this means that they really care about me and this is their way of showing it. So at least from that standpoint of like being able to feel a lot of appreciation for something, I think that's easier once you do have a good grasp of what your partner or partner's love languages are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think just the thing that comes to mind with this is just also realizing that it can change. 
Um, mm, mm-hmm. And maybe even change drastically, either based yeah. on your life circumstances or just it just happens to change for you. Um, maybe you mm-hmm. like learn some other ways to appreciate certain sorts of things or you have less of a need for certain types of things, whatever it is. Um, but I think that's something that like, you know, I'd taken the test before and then we've talked about love languages on episodes in the past. And sometimes we'd be talking about it and I'd go, I don't know, that that feels significant to me, but I know that was low mm. on my results. And then when I took the test preparing for this episode, my results were very different than they'd mm. been last huh. time I took this, which was probably a couple years ago or something. So, Do you have any idea where that might be? Well, I have some theories and I want to talk about them in the bonus okay. episode. But okay. I think this the important takeaway is just that they can change and that it's this isn't just a like, I oh, got this figured out, no problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like with so many... Yeah. Things that we present on the show, there's no single easy solution that's going to have everything figured out. And I think it's the same thing here. Um, but we do want to talk about if two people's love languages are different, what can they do about it? So like we were saying, it's important to be able to first just communicate about what your love language is, you know, get clear on what your own love language is, and maybe even be specific with your partner. Like it's probably not going to cut it just to be like, oh, well, I'm words of affirmation period. You know, be really it's like, like, cool. Like, get get <laughs> into that nuance, you know, like, and I think that the most effective way to do this, if you can, is to specifically highlight things that your partner has done that felt very meaningful to you. So it could be like the other day when I was having a hard time at work and you sent me that really long text message about how proud of me you were for, mm. you know, the work that I was doing or how hard I worked. Like that was really meaningful to me. Um, or the other day when you gave me this specific compliment about my appearance or about whatever, like that was really meaningful to me, you know, kind of try to give very specific examples. This is really good conversation to have in a radar or just to having a separate conversation specifically about your different love languages. Maybe even as an added bonus in communicating about those things that you especially appreciated, if you can use their love language to express that, I could see that being extra effective, right? Yeah. So it's, it's like, you know, oh, you know, maybe just saying like, if their love language is, what would be a good example? Um, You know, maybe say if theirs is physical touch and yours is words of affirmation, you know, it it could be like a, you know, when you're saying, Hey, I, I really appreciated like the fact that you told me that you were proud of me and that you were impressed with what I'd been doing, like pair that with a little bit of cuddling or like holding their hand or like a touch Mm -hmm. to go along with that to like really make sure they get that this is, this is meaningful and that they feel that love too. How would you do that with gifts? Gifts? uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Give them Dr. God's book. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, that might be a little weird. (laughs) He did, I know, it's funny, but he did uh, apparently have, like, a special gift set, like, the, and he was like, oh, this is specifically for all those people all out right. there who, you know, love gifts, like, Gosh, yeah. here's a, a special gift set of my book, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> milking that okay, cash doctor. cow. But say if you exactly. know that, if you know that there's this gift, right, part of the gift thing is not about it being expensive or whatever, but it's that sure. you were thinking about them when you weren't with them, right, and that you gave a thoughtful gift, Maybe it is totally. the next time you give them some little gift along with that being like, you know, I was thinking about you and I was thinking about how happy it made me when you took the time to help out with the laundry during that day when I was really busy, even though I said I was going to do it that day, you know, and want to let you know, kind of like pair it with that. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. Just brainstorming. I here. like that. It's good. Um, okay. What else can we do? Maybe uh, listen to this episode. Hey, good job. (laughs) You're doing that one already. (laughs) Um, Maybe listen to it together or, you know, separately and talk about it. It could be a good um, kind of preparation for taking the quiz or just having that conversation. You know, maybe you don't even need to take the quiz because you hear this episode and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so obviously this and and this and this, right? These are my top three or whatever it is, right? Um, So just do that and have a conversation. Like I was saying, I think it's not so much about like getting the answer, but about a place to start a conversation, like some insights from which to have a conversation. Yeah. So we came up with a little exercise, which is fun because I actually, Jace, I was like, oh, 
This seems like an exercise that you would do, like a journaling <laughs> thing. You were the one who came up but with this, though. So I, I know, and I, I didn't. It, it's not like from anywhere. I just was like, oh, this seems like something we'd we'd say to do. So <laughs> let's do it, everyone. Um, okay, so if you're having a difficult time with figuring out everyone's love language, your your one partner or your multiple partners try this exercise. So for one week or longer, depending on how often you see them, have you and your partner write down specific instances where you feel like you were giving love to them and they didn't receive it in the way that you intended and vice versa. So also on the flip side, write down times where you felt love from your partner in the manner that it was intended and vice versa, your partner will do this as well. And then compare notes at the end of the week or the end of, you know, the two weeks or the month or whatever. So that way you can kind of see like, oh, yeah, I was trying to give you this here. Or, oh, I really, I thought that I was, you know, giving you some words of affirmation, but it actually, I guess you didn't receive it in that way. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of compare from that standpoint. And it, it can be like a really good way in order to continue the conversation and talk about like, hey, how can I do this better? I could also see that conversation going, you know, oh, when you gave me that gift, I really, that was huge to me. I really appreciated that. I, I, I But you wrote it down as something that you felt wasn't received. Like, I, I'm sorry, yeah. I know that meant a lot to me. That right there could help, but also could help then to go, okay, how can I communicate that better in the future better, that yeah. I do appreciate totally. it? Totally, yeah. 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 And again, if you have more than one partner, you're probably going to be juggling many people's different love languages. So uh, keep that shit straight, basically, <laughs> is the best thing I can say is like, if you got to take notes, take notes, be specific. I, to me, that feels like a love language of like, if mm. you're... If yeah. you're diligent enough to be like, I'm going to write this down so I remember it, or I'm going to like, I'm going to make sure that I remember like, oh, okay, yeah, you mentioned like wanting specifically this kind of gift or oh, well, like I remember that you responded really positively when I complimented this or whatever, you know, like, just pay attention, basically, you know, pay attention, be open to the fact that it may be different. Um, honestly, I think it's really helpful to to do that kind of exercise with all of your partners. I think it's super helpful even to, I would, I mean... I didn't come up with an official exercise about this or anything. So, uh -huh. so take this with a grain of salt. But I'm wondering, even if you sat down with a partner and both of you went through all of the love languages and just talking about like, what are the things that feel effective to me in this particular arena or not? Because mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet it's probably rare that there's one particular love language where you're like, meh, meh. Yeah. <laughs> nothing that you would do. I <laughs> wouldn't care. I don't care yeah. if you give me a small gift, big gift. I don't care. I'm just like, I'm just, it's does nothing for me, nothing whatsoever. Yeah. You know, you can find, you can dig and kind of find the nuance of like what would actually help you feel loved and appreciated. And I think that'd be a really interesting exercise also. Yeah. Totally. Something that I was thinking about with this one in terms of, I think this could be used in a lot of different ways, not just with love languages, but if there's something you really specifically want to remember in relation to a particular partner, say like, like, you know that they have a love language that's not natural for you, but you do want to, like, remember to do that and to improve that. And that is to write that love language or some little note or thing that reminds you of it in their contact name in your phone. And this, huh. it, with for things like Facebook Messenger that you can't really do that because it's just using their name from there... Um, I suppose, you know, if you communicated to them that this is why you're doing it, you could like in your messenger conversation can change people's nicknames to be different things. You could put it there, but just so that it's somewhere you're actually seeing it often. It's like while you're thinking about that person, like you're texting them or you're getting a text from them, you see that little reminder. It can kind of mm. help to go, oh, yeah. And you might not need to do that for very long, but just to kind of have it pop up a number of times or maybe put it as like the picture on the background of your phone. Or somewhere that you kind of... <laughs> Acts of service or right? something. <laughs> something. So it just kind of like comes to your mind more often, right? Because I think the core of all of this is like showing that you're thinking about the person. And if it's a way you're not used to thinking, just something to kind of prompt it to like spark that in your mind can and be really me, helpful. It's probably going to be better than keeping them in your phone as like Emily Tinder or Jace <laughs> OK Cupid. <laughs> Uh, I, I know wow. y'all are out there that do that. Oh, yeah. You know who you sure. are. Don't do that shit. 
<laughs> Sorry, I could go on a whole just rant about pers- that. Personalize it a little bit yes. more. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and love languages are a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. So then when yeah. they're like, why am I, you know, Emily X of Sir or Emily Gifts? And it's like, oh, because I'm trying to learn more love languages and like how to okay. express to I you just, whatever. Okay. I'm hoping that the situation is that y'all talked about this oh, yeah, ahead of time. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Because I, I could see someone really, really turned off by that too. So I just want to defend that person. That sure. one person. Maybe I'm that person. Maybe I you're that know. person. I don't know. I think you <laughs> How talk dare you it. write this down like that? <laughs> How That's dare funny. you? I, I feel like that comes from you being a very memory privileged person. <laughs> oh, well, that's an interesting phrase. <laughs> <laughs> memory privileged. Huh? And yeah. as someone who struggles a lot more with memory, mm, for okay. me, it's all like right, the right. fact that I wrote it down, it shows that I care <laughs> rather than for you. I think the fact that you didn't need to means that you care i don't know no i get it but uh, but to be fair i was just saying i was like you know taking the effort to write things down i'm like okay Mm. i can see the care into that okay all right (laughs) okay all right well we'll discuss it more at our next radar okay (laughs) Um, (laughs) and then okay last one we have here is that even if your partner has a dominant love language and you know it and you're like i got it don't forget about the other ones too many many people there's like two that are up at the top close to each other but even if they're not, it's, it's useful to show your love in a variety of ways. Maybe like one love language kind of gets oversaturated and that then it becomes like all of a sudden a gift is really meaningful because you've been getting a lot of quality time and a lot of touch. And now all of a sudden, oh, another love language that can kind of be extra meaningful. Spice some stuff up. Yeah. 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 Totally. And Love then, that. and then just having conversations about then how specifically within that love language that's meaningful for people. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this and specifically our love languages and our test results. Cause yeah, I, I was kind of like, mm, maybe I need to take my test again. Cause some of it I really agreed with. And some of it I was like, eh, I don't know, whatever. I don't know about <laughs> this top one, but yeah. So we'll talk about that um, a little bit more in depth in the bonus for those of you who are patrons and those of you who want to become a patron. You can check that out as well. And we would love to hear from you what your love languages are, how you show them to your partner or partners. Are there ways in which you keep everybody straight and everybody's love language straight (laughs) for yourself? Uh, We would love to hear about all of that. So the best place to share your thoughts with other listeners is on this episode's discussion thread in our private Facebook group or Discord chat. You can get access to these groups and join our exclusive community by going to patreon.com slash multiamory. In addition, you can share with us publicly on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can email us at info at multiamory.com, leave us a voicemail at 678 M U L T I zero five, or you can leave us a voice message on Facebook. Multiamory is created and produced by Dedeker Winston, Jace Lindgren, and me, Emily Matlack. Our episodes are edited by Mauricio Balvanera. Our social media wizard is Will McMillan. Our production assistants are, Wa- are Rachel Shenowark and Carson Collins. Our theme song is Forms I Know I Did by Josh and Anand from the Fractal Cave EP. The full transcript is available on this episode's page on multiamory.com. 